Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm Stuart. And I'm Aaron, and we are really glad that you're able to join us for our online socially distance, quarantine, COVID-19, distance, whatever you want to call it, online video this morning. The lads, dads and granddads group at Hamilton Road Baptist Church usually have one of our normal men's breakfasts every couple of months. We in the committee um, have just felt that it would be really important still to um, have some sort of online uh, meeting. And we're just so glad that technology provides such an opportunity. So we, uh, we just felt that we would have this meeting just so we could share fellowship with each other, learn from each other. And yeah, it's just it's good to see those faces again. So I hope you have your breakfast in front of you if you're watching us live, or at the very least, have a cuppa in hand. Aaron, what about you? Oh yes, I've got my cup here. And yeah, usually around this time, I'm stinking off the bacon and the sausages. But yeah, if you're watching this live with us this morning, yeah, drop us a drop us a wee comment and let us know uh, what you're having and what you're enjoying. Even send us a wee photograph, even that will be just for a wee bit of wee bit of fun as well. If you've not been able to join us for the previous videos that we've made, they're all still available on Facebook and YouTube. So once again, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to uh, join us this morning and um, just seeing all the friendly faces again, being able to share fellowship with each other and just learning to hear what God uh, wants to say to us um, in this lockdown. So yeah, just really enjoy what we have planned for you this morning. So now we're going to thank God together and we're going to have a little time of praise. So I hope you enjoy. Let us pray. Almighty God and loving Heavenly Father, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you this morning for our lads, dads and granddads breakfast. We give thanks that we can still meet and have fellowship together in these strange and difficult times. We pray for your blessing on everyone who takes part today. We pray for the Ray family as they lead us in praise and worship. We bring before you Aaron and Stuart as they interview Peter about his work in OM. Lord, we pray to bless Peter in the work that he's doing and guide him in the weeks and the months ahead. Lord, bless Terry as he opens up your word to us. We ask as we listen to your word that by the Holy Spirit we will apply it to our lives to enable us to reach out to others in our community. We pray for every lad, dad and granddad that you be on to them all that they need at this time. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Understand. 
In a moment, we're going to have a reading from God's Word Bible, and then we're going to have our guest speaker, Mr. Terry Laverty, and he's going to bring us some thoughts from God's Word, and then he's going to have some questions for each of us to think about, to really get into this, to really maybe make a few decisions about it and really think about it. This is really an important thing to go over, so I do hope you enjoy this. I do hope you consider this, and please share this with other people as well. Yeah, but just before that though, um, we're going to actually hear now from one of our young people at Hamilton Road, um, Peter Carrigan, and this was a really exciting interview uh, for me to conduct, uh, just catching up with Peter, um, who is currently on a placement year, and I'm not sure if you remember where he is, but uh, we're just going to head over to the interview now, where you'll be able to catch up with him and hear all the exciting news about what exactly he's doing on his placement year, but ultimately serving God. So. Yes, just enjoy the interview and then what Terry has to say to us. Hi, Peter. Thanks very much for uh, taking the time to have a wee chat with us here. We're not a bother. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. It's really good to see you. Um, so, yeah, as I say, thanks for agreeing to do the interview here. But maybe you could uh, just introduce yourself uh, briefly, who you are, where you're from, um, and just connection to Hamilton Road. Because uh, we've obviously some new faces and listeners um, just over the past few while. Yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Peter Carrigan. I'm 21 years old. So uh, I'm son of David and Susan Carrigan, if you know them. Um, I have been studying at university uh, for two years up in uh, Londonderry, um, studying mechanical engineering. And yeah, right now I'm on my placement year as part of my degree. Um, yeah, halfway across the world on a ship called Logos Hope uh, with an organization, Operation Mobilization. Very good. Um, yeah, so I've, been, I've been here for eight months so far. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, it was roughly this time last year uh, we actually interviewed you um, at the Lads, Dads and Granddads breakfast where you were informing us about this gap year. Um, and you've mentioned that you're on the Logos Hope ship. So can you maybe just uh, briefly give us uh, an idea of what that entails and some of uh, what your specific duties and roles are when you're on the ship. Yeah, so yeah, I'll start off with my own my own sort of role. So I work in the engine department. Um, as I came here as part of my degree, it's uh, sort of it's like part of my part of my experience has to be working in the engine department and doing stuff with the engineers. Um, so yeah, I. Every three weeks or so, I go on a watch week, it's called. So that's a week of uh, eight hours a day in the engine room where we have to watch over all the equipment, all the engines that are running and making sure that everything's running well. Uh, the other weeks are spent um, doing any sort of maintenance jobs, cleaning jobs in the engine room, whatever it could be. Yeah, and then working with the engineers a lot, um, doing a lot of sort of upkeep of the engines and stuff that has to be done every so many thousand hours or whatever that the engines run. So yeah, working away with that. Apart from me, uh, in normal normal times, um, the ship's ministry is, we have a book fair and a cafe on board. Yeah. Um, so we invite however many thousands of people every day. In Brazil, we would have 20,000 people per day coming on board the ship um, in Rio. So yeah, we, we invite them on board. Uh, there's a book, book fair for whether it's, fiction books whether it's kids books but mostly uh, theological and biblical books and providing bibles for people who haven't really had the opportunity and i know it doesn't maybe doesn't seem like much uh, at home because there's libraries and stuff all over the place but a lot of the places we've gone to it's quite difficult for you to get yourself an affordable book and um, so it's been really great for us to be able to provide for them and yeah it's a great ministry opportunity especially with the the cafe when it's open and stuff to just to sit down and chat with people yeah and then uh, well also another thing we would do when we were open is once a week every one of the crew members will go out so a different day every 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 week it can be where we go out and we work with churches we work with youth groups uh, building projects prison ministries anything along those lines uh, where we go and just share the gospel with people give out bibles whatever it may be uh, for that one week um, do events on board as well but obviously all that's changed the current situation yes. uh, so we can't invite anybody else on board so now it looks a lot more like building the ship up with um, a crew ministry rather than a 
of of the ship ministry. Uh, obviously, yeah, we're shut to the public. Yeah, and we've been actually sixty days now. We've been with nobody else coming on or off, or well, coming on board the ship. Um, okay. So we know that there's no no risk of anything happening. So, yeah. And and you were saying obviously you have been um, self self isolating the ship for the last sixty days. And is everybody keeping in good health um, on the ship, or is there yeah. any concerns? Yeah, there's nothing, no hints of coronavirus or anything on board the ship. Wow. Uh, yeah, so as I say, we've had 60 days where there's been absolutely nothing and nobody coming on board as well, so there's no risk of it. Yeah, we, obviously, there's little bits of flu or whatever coming around, but nothing to the state of coronavirus, you know, that's, yeah. So we're, thankfully, we shot early enough that there wasn't going to be an issue. Well, that's good to hear that everybody's well and safe. Now, I um, as I have a good, I like to keep in contact with your dad, um, and he and I get on well. And I heard a wee rumor, uh, not only that you might not only be in the engine room. I believe you've had an opportunity or two, maybe sharing from a pulpit. Any thing you'd like to just sort of share us about those sort of opportunities you have in terms of sharing the gospel in that format? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, I mean, <laughs> yeah, the amount of things that I've learned while being here as well is um, absolutely amazing. Uh, the amount of opportunities we're given every week, especially when we're open, um, to be able to speak in front of people and to, yeah, just to be able to share the gospel with people. So uh, my first time, my first opportunity to preach uh, was in Brazil. Um, uh, so obviously preaching through a translator, I'd never actually spoken through a translator before. Uh, so how did, you find, yeah. how did you find that challenge of a translator? No, that was that was a difficult one. So the first time, the first time I spoke, my translator was great. She had just got off uh, some presidential meetings with um, YWAM uh, okay. that week before, so she was speaking to the president of Brazil and stuff, and translating that for for people uh, all over the world. So. Yeah, and then going to a church the next weekend to translate for us. So that was great. The second one, it was her first time ever translating. And then obviously with, with my accent as well, um, it sort of threw her off a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so that was a bit more difficult. Um, sort of lost that uh, flow or train of thought as much. And also like for, for my first and second time preaching as well, it was quite difficult to keep that thought as while going through a translator. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've since had opportunities as well in that uh, in Kingston, actually, where we are now. Uh, before we closed, I had an opportunity to go and preach in a church. Yeah, really, really, really great opportunities open open up for something that I never really thought that I would have the opportunity to do as much. Um, so it's really, really cool to see, yeah, that Brilliant. sort of growth. Brilliant. It's so encouraging to hear that, yes, you're on a gap year, you're doing an engineering degree, but how God's using that and how you're able to witness and share uh, the love of Jesus that way so that's just so encouraging um, obviously you've been on the ship for the past eight months um, and you've had you've travelled many miles now is there any particular countries uh, that you've visited that have really stood out to you? Yeah but the, the main so we basically for three months our first three months were spent in Brazil uh, going to I don't know how many different ports maybe five or six different ports um, and then after that, the la the next, I mean, I think it was the next four months, I think, until we closed, maybe three months. And then uh, we had, yeah, it would have been three months in the Caribbean. Um, so, yeah, we've had some amazing opportunities. Um, one thing that sticks out to me every time is uh, in Belém in Brazil. It's a city in Brazil uh, just beside the Amazon rainforest. Um, I got the opportunity to work with Venezuelan refugees who have came there for so like a kind of safety um, from their country. Uh, Venezuela is obviously, or well, I don't know how much people know, but it's in a rough sort of state. Um, yeah. And they flee to Brazil for, for safety. So being able to work with them has been one experience that's been phenomenal. Uh, some beautiful islands as well with the Caribbean, going to islands like St. Vincent and Barbados. Um, and just going around and taking break in those places, but even being able to share Jesus with whoever we come in contact with as well has been really cool. Um, some people who, even so remote in areas that you never really expect people to be in, uh, you end up sharing with them about Jesus and they've never they've never even heard the gospel before, you know. 
Um, so really, really cool opportunities. Yeah. You've mentioned opportunities and the chance to um, speak to communities who maybe have never heard the gospel before. Um, can you think of any um, sort of real God moments that you've witnessed where you've just seen God in action and see um, just his power in, in that situation that you find yourself in? So I'm trying, I'll try and pick one. <laughs> um, uh, so when we were in, oh, where was I? I think it was St. Vincent. Uh, I was in, um, we, we were going and we, we met up with the pastor. Oh no, it wasn't, it was Guyana. We were in, and we met up with the pastor of a church um, who works with these sort of people groups who never, um, never get to hear the gospel really. They don't really have any churches around them, which is quite rare in Guyana as well. Um, <laughs> so we went around and uh, went to these little villages of these people. They literally live in little shacks. Like they build it for themselves and they live in these little shacks. Um, but they seem so happy all the time as well. They really do love love that life. Um, and just going in and being able to share the gospel with them. So the first place I went to, um, we were able to share and pray with a bunch of people there. Um, and a lot of non-believers that didn't end up accepting Christ as their savior, but a lot of thought in that. And then we, we moved on and I was praying in the car. I remember so specifically praying that I just wanted to see people saved today. Like I wanted to see see God moving and, and salvation for, yeah. for these people that we were going to go and see. And then we, we went to this next place and literally the first person I speak to um, accepts Jesus as his savior. A really wow. just awesome way of seeing God work through through the prayer and through just our, our ministry opportunities. Um, and then going around that village, we ended up seeing eight people, eight people accepted Christ that day in that, in that little village. Um, oh, so really, really cool opportunities. Brilliant. That's so encouraging, and it's just uh, it's just so good to hear that. It doesn't matter about language. It doesn't matter about location or whatever. Uh, the gospel is mm. suited for everybody, and that's available for everybody. Class. Um, yeah. Just before I let you go, Peter, um, is there any prayer points that you would maybe like to share with uh, the guys at Hamilton Road uh, that they can continue to remember in for you uh, as you remain on the ship? Yeah, absolutely. So the next the next three months, the, the final three months of my placement is going to look like this, going to look like isolation on board. Uh, there's no, no thought of opening up yet, really. Um, and that's not confirmed, but really, I can't see it happening. The, the idea right now on the ship is that we are building together in the spirit is, is sort of the title for this time for us. Um, so we're getting opportunities to do different courses, getting opportunities. I'm, I'm actually leading a, a brotherhood group with, a, with another group of guys. We're leading a brotherhood group where we meet um, every other week and just share as guys, be vulnerable as guys and just continue in that opportunity. So one, that's one prayer point would be that that would go well, that my leading in that. And with the other group of leaders that we would be able to to lead really well in that and just follow what God wants done in that in that uh, sort of group. Awesome. My prayer would also be for the guys, um, because obviously it's a voluntary thing to go to. And some some guys might be struggling and just uh, like even in those struggles, they don't want to want to come. And um, yeah. so just a prayer for those guys that they would they would like to come and just yeah grow, grow together. Sorry, sorry for all the noise. It's a football match going on above. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and that'll be one prayer point. Another one, uh, I've got a small group of six guys as well. We're meeting up uh, every Wednesday. Every, every, everybody on the ship on Wednesday mornings gets together for a Bible study in groups of six. Um, and that only started when the ship shut down as well. So a prayer that that would be really fruitful and a good vulnerable time for everybody. Yeah, workshops. I just finished a preaching workshop there that God would work through those workshops for all of the ship, uh, for me as well. And just, yeah, learning as much as we can and yeah, continuing to learn about him. And just a, uh, one thing, or well, two, two sort of big things that I've been focusing on um, as well is, is unity and abiding in Christ. Um, yeah. And they're two, two massive things that I, I have been focusing on throughout my time here. Unity and 65 different nationalities. There's about 340 of us left uh, on board. And yeah, we're uh, just continuing unity, just the prayer that that would, that would continue to happen. The abiding in Christ as well is that we would all have a hunger for, for God's word 
um, that we would all continue to, to speak about God in all of our conversations, that we would continue to just seek first his kingdom, yeah, and to dwell in his house for all the days of our lives. So, yeah, that's that's really everything I can think of now. Brilliant. Thank you. I think Johnny and Mackers better watch themselves. That's very encouraging <laughs> to hear all the opportunities that you're having. So, well, Peter, look, it's been so good getting to catch up with you and just to hear how you're getting on. And I know uh, the men and the guys at Holland Road and everybody who's been tuning in over the past couple of weeks yeah. watching their videos will really appreciate uh, hearing from you yeah. and uh, be encouraged. Yeah. Can I also can I also just say a massive thank you to everybody as well? Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. Just that uh, we're still we're still going. So just thank you to everybody who has been supporting me in prayer or, and finance um, as well. And I just yeah, I do really really appreciate it. Without without you guys, I really I really couldn't be here. Um, and God has really used used you guys as a blessing as a blessing for me. So yeah, I really I really am just very thankful. No problem. Well, we're just so glad that you're getting to serve God in this way and that you're just um, reaping from the benefits of it. So, yeah, we're just so encouraged by it. And, and you're, I know there's the WhatsApp group where you keep us updated as well. So we're really grateful to hear those updates from you. But, Peter, I'll let you go. It's really good to hear from you. Uh, we'll certainly keep your prayer points uh, and, and the focus of our minds. And we're just so glad to know as well that everybody on the ship is well and safe so we'll be praying for that as well that that will continue for you so but keep safe yourself and just really encouraged to hear how it was going for you i'm sure we'll get to talk to you soon absolutely thank you keep safe peter thank you the reading for today is taken from philippians chapter 3 verse 14 through to chapter 4 verse 9 I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this to you also. And in any case, you should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have in us. For I have often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame. They are focused on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait for a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. So then, my dearly loved and longed for brothers and sisters, my joy and crown in this matter stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I urge Yodia and I urge Sintachi to agree in the Lord. Yes, I also ask you, true partner, to help these women who have contended for the gospel at my side, along with Clement and the rest of the co-workers whose names are in the Book of Life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Hi, my, my name is Terry Loverty, and I uh, count it a privilege to be able to share with you some thoughts in relation to, uh, as men, how can we look up and live it up as uh, during as we spend our time <coughs> during uh, the COVID-19 lockdown and beyond. Uh, these are some lessons that I've learned from Philippians chapter 3 and 4, and I hope that they'll help you. Um, just want to read a couple of verses uh, from the scriptures. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, we read, Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And then in chapter 4, verse 4, uh, we, we read this uh, scripture that is so exciting. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just and pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. What you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, says Paul, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. We pray that God will bless his word to our hearts and lives. As you look at me, you'll see that I need a haircut. It's, uh, I, look, I feel like the naughty professor in, in the film Back to the Future. Um, <coughs> and maybe you need a haircut as well. Um, but anyway, uh, lockdown's a difficult time. We miss out on lots of things. If you know anything at all about the author uh, of most of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, you'll know that like you and me, his life was far from squeaky clean before he met Jesus. He was driven by ambition to become the best and most zealous Jewish leader that the world had ever seen, even if that involved bullying and even killing other human beings. Think about that, because that fact should cause you and me uh, to stop and think and to ask ourselves a question. What are we longing to become? And what are we willing to do to make that happen, even at the expense of others? Surely we need to, need to ask God to search our hearts as David did in Psalm 139 to ensure that he's the one who calls the shots in our lives as he leads us into his way everlasting. Lest we cause great harm to others and ourselves as we pursue our own selfish ambitions. And so please make it your priority to talk to God about that, about what your ambitions are. He's given you time to do that during lockdown. We know that Paul was in lockdown as he wrote the letter to the Philippians. He spent every hour in chains on death row, denied of all the things that he loved and enjoyed. But the thing that I want you to see is that his heart wasn't in lockdown. He wasn't down in the dumps or in despair. And why is that? Well, it's because he was full of supernatural joy. And the reason for that was that he had that was what he'd set his sights on. Maybe he was the inspiration for uh, the little poem, two liner that uh, Frederick Langbridge wrote. Two men looked out from prison bars. One saw mud, the other saw stars. Both in the same situation and yet with completely different perspectives. And so perspective is really important. And I just wonder, where has your gaze been during these days of lockdown, these weeks? How do you see your future unfolding? Do you look around you and within you? to see and hear and feel all kinds of fear and negativity and gloom that leads to a sense of hopelessness and despair? Or have you been making your way through this COVID valley knowing that the, the divine shepherd goes before you as we read in Psalm 23 and verse 4 so that you've been learning and growing um, through and growing in faith through wilderness living and it is wilderness for some of us especially those of you who are alone but you know one of the most important lessons that we'll ever learn in life is that some of life's most important lessons are learned when God forces us out of our comfort zones to discover that he really is Abba Father that Jesus really is Emmanuel God with us with you and that the Holy Spirit really does equip you supernaturally to live an abundant life, uh, even and even most especially in times of hardship. Having prayed about how I might encourage uh, you men and boys in these strange times, God woke me up the other day with some very practical thoughts that are focused on the words of Paul that are printed above uh, that I've just quoted to you from Philippians 3 and 4 using the, the, the acrid, acronym COVID, C-O-V-I-D so that hopefully you can learn them on the five fingers of your hand, C-O-V-I-D. Um, 
and that you won't forget them as you face trials in coming days. And so, see what does C stand for? Not for crisis, no. C is for the Latin word corona, which describes the crown-shaped envelope of the coronavirus. When trouble comes, people of faith need to ask themselves an important question. Who is in control here? Is it a disease? Is it the government and all the edicts that are being given to us about how to live our lives these days? Is it the World Health Organization? No. The Holy Spirit reminds us of the crucial truth that Jesus wears the crown. He is commander of his cosmos. So please, don't ever let the devil cause you to doubt scriptures like Revelation chapter 19 and verse 16 that teach you that the Lord whom you serve is king of all kings and lord of all lords. And because that is true, everything changes. Because that is true, your future is secure because he will hold you fast. So don't worry during lockdown. Worship him as king and listen to him when he speaks to you. He'll speak through his word and by his spirit. He'll speak to you through circumstances. He'll speak to you through the counsel uh, of trusted Christian friends. God speaks in all kinds of ways if you're open to hear him. And Paul tells us that Jesus is at hand. Isn't that good? He's like the thumb that controls all of the functions of your hand. Life without him is limited. I looked up about the function of the thumb on the internet the other day. Do you know that one in a hundred thousand people are born with thumb aplasia, which means thumblessness, not having a thumb. And specialists estimate that their hands are only 40% efficient as a result. Well, God's word tells us that life without Jesus is so much worse than that because you've only got your limited self to rely on 24 hours a day and if, if you don't have a relationship with him. And so if you have never bowed your knee to Jesus, if you have never experienced his divine protection and provision every hour of every day, can I encourage you today to think about that? I urge you to come to him. How do you do that, you ask? Well, it'll involve an act of your will. And so while C is for corona, that Jesus wears the crown, O is for openness to the God who loves you. The first finger is called the index finger. It's the one that points the way. And we know that God created cattle to be herbivores and lions to be carnivores. In other words, uh, cows are vegetarians and lions are meat eaters. But what did he create you to be? He created you to be a scriptivore who reads and feeds on his living word, which is a lamp to your feet every day. I want to ask you, is that what you're doing during lockdown? D don't forget that when Jesus was going through his lockdown, his wilderness experience, his mantra was, man shall not live by bread alone, physical bread, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus was sustained by God in his greatest trials. And the good news is that you will be too if you'll just open yourself up to God all day, every day. So pray that Jesus will help you to be open to his word and to obey what he commands for his glory and for your good. Then V, uh, v is for vision. 2020 vision. This is the year 2020. The middle di digit uh, of your right hand or of your left hand uh, is the long finger. It's the finger with the farthest reach. And COVID-19 is so called because it started in 2019, not 2020. But when will it ever end is the question that we all are asking. You know, it's interesting that number 19 in Hebrew, the number 19 is the word kof. A Hebrew rabbi from New York on YouTube explains that kof looks similar to resh, which is the letter R in Hebrew, but it's not an R. And so it's a poser. It's a pretender. 
you know? As a poser, it signifies emptiness and impurity. And it's, it's fascinating to note also that the numerical value of the four letters in the word kof um, in Hebrew, the numerical value of that word is 100, which is the Hebrew number for death. Isn't that an interesting coincidence? Sadly, we know that COVID-19 has been the cause of many physical deaths since uh, 2019. But at times like this, we need to be aware of the reality of spiritual death. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. What's sin? Well, sin has that letter I in the middle of it. I do what I want to do. I, I don't want to do what God or anybody else wants me to do. And so when I do what I want to do, I revolt against God, which sadly, the reality of that, the consequence of that, is that it makes me revolting to God and it makes me deserving of his punishment. So that being so, this word kosh, or, uh, kof reminds us that we need to be wise. Don't be a kof poser. Don't be a great pretender. God looks into your sinful heart and he knows exactly what you're like. And he also knows the challenges that you're facing during lockdown and beyond. And yet the good news is that he never gives up on you. He has a plan to bless you. And Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He's everything that you can ever need. So, if you lack vision, then look up. Look up. Ask him for 2020 vision, and he will lead you. He is Emmanuel, God with you. Hallelujah. places I will call. Incline your ear to me and you, and hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I come before your throne? Yet full forgiveness meets my case. I stand So 
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the members of the Lads, Dads and Granddads Committee. And we thank you for all their hard work that they have put into this ministry. And Lord, we thank you for the new members that we have brought on board to the committee this year, David, Big Rab, Ross and Aaron. And Lord, we ask that you bless the work that the Men's Committee carries out. And we ask also for your blessings at this time with the new technology that we are using and the outreach opportunities that that presents to the lads, dads and granddads. And Lord, we ask again your blessing on Aaron and Stuart as they lead this ministry um, in this challenging time. And Lord, we just ask that, you, that it's all done for your glory and it's not about us. And Lord, we thank you for all the contributions that have been made over the month of May during this uh, lockdown time that we are facing. And Lord, we thank you again for all the hard work that Jack has done in order to make this a reality, to bring your word to the lads, dads and granddads in Hamilton Road Baptist Church and indeed beyond. And Lord, we ask that wherever any of the lads, dads and granddads in Hampton Road Baptist Church are, whatever position they sit in their families, whatever they're involved in. Lord, we ask that they shine with your light, with your wisdom, with your love and your compassion and caring whoever they meet. And Lord, we thank you for the input from Terry today. And Lord, we ask that you bless his word and that we should take his word to our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for the contribution today by Johnny Ray and Oliver and Theo as they have faithfully served the church during this lockdown period, bringing us worship and praise. And Lord, we thank you for the leadership team at Hamilton Road Baptist, particularly Keith, who is a, an ardent supporter of this ministry. And Lord, we just pray for your protection on all of the lads, dads and granddads in our church. And Lord, we ask that you pull alongside those who are suffering at the moment, those who are facing bereavement and the loss of a loved one, those who are at the moment feeling anxious about the longer term future for their jobs, for their family, for other family members. But Lord, we know that your plan is a greater plan than the worries that men have. And Lord, we ask that you reveal that plan to us, that you give us your comfort, that you give us your faith and security and knowledge that Jesus Christ died to save us and died to take our sins away. And Lord, help us keep that focus on you and the work of your son, Jesus Christ, and the word of the gospel. And we ask this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.